the Pelicans lose 124 to 111 against the Phoenix Suns. Hey, man. Playing playoffs, we're going to talk about it all. Let's talk about it. Welcome to another episode here of Propel Talk. I am your host filling in for Justin and Jermaine, who is on vacation. Uh, I got Chaz here with me. Got Ross, got Lido as well. Uh, we are live. As always, y'all, if y'all have not, just hit the like button early. Not so you ain't even got to do it later. Um, yeah, man. Y'all watch the game. Pelicans. <laughs> Pelicans get uh, 50 dropped on them again by, uh, by uh, Devin Booker um in new orleans uh nurkis with 19 and 19 zion williamson finishes with 30 trey murphy drops 21 cj 15 and 9 um and now the suns sit a game now they own the tiebreaker and they sent a game out of sixth place where the pelicans currently sit um i'll start early with you guys opening thoughts about the game what you what you saw what you your overall feelings are as the game ended now. Um, and we currently stand. Lito, let's start with you. It's just stunk. Um, it was not a, it's not a lot of positive things I could say. Uh, I feel like at what point, what point do you see how teams play Zion Williamson? And then you see how Devin Booker is like, this man, he, he, he walked in the gym on fire and, and there was no double. There was no, no, you did not make life difficult for him at all. To be honest, the whole team slept walk through the first quarter. Like I looked up, it was 30 to 18. And I'm like, damn. And then I'm like, okay, well, at some point, you know, you you'll make a decision to, you know, get the get the ball out of Devin's hands. Like I tweeted this. If Nurk if Nurk scores 30, who the fuck cares? You know what I'm saying? Like, you 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 can't you can't let Booker, Bill, and KD go off. And all of those guys didn't go off. KD had a quiet, he had a pretty quiet game for his standards. I mean, and and Bill was really wasn't, I mean, he made three threes, but dog, Devin was 19 for 28. He scored 52 points. Like you did not make that. Sh- Listen, Hurt, her, my dog. I love her, but that her was in hell. Is and and it's it is literally not her fault. Cause when somebody is on fire like that. And then you decide, oh, we gonna put her on him now. He already hot. He 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 hot already. Like, what what is he supposed to do at that point? I just don't understand. I don't understand the the thought of oh, are we too good to double? Oh, are we too, are we too good to like? And then and bro, I'm 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 sorry. I, I don't mean to be long with it, but literally, bro, literally, how the fuck do you keep losing Devin Booker? How is he the open man? So, Chaz, that, that actually leads to my to my <laughs> next question. When you when you a lot of folks and I saw on the timeline, they said you know similar. They shared Lido's thoughts about what Devin Booker you know does in New Orleans, what he's been doing as of late, and the thoughts of trapping him. What are your thoughts, just from a basketball philosophy, defensively, of getting the ball getting the ball out of his hand when you have? Another gen when you have a generational scorer like Kevin Durant, one of the greatest scorers of all time, on the floor with him, and a guy like Bradley Beal, who's been one of the you know one of the better scorers over the past five years. I think averaged with thirty points last year or the year before. Mm -hmm. Um, What are your thoughts about trying to trap and double book when you have those other perimeter options as well, and somebody that you can dump the ball down to on short rolls like Nurkic? You know, man. I'm a, I'm a little bit conflicted because, like, you know, we were texting about how will we handle the defensive uh, matchups and stuff today earlier. And for me, I wouldn't have done much different defensively, only because I, I know at some point Booker going to, like, kind of hit a wall, shoot himself out the game. Like, you know, we this, this is something we kind of seen in the past with him. So, I, you know, I was like, I would live and die by him having a great or bad night. And by the end of the game, you you did have it in a single digit game. You get a couple offensive rebounds here. You make your free throws. You get a couple gimmies here. There. This is probably a more competitive game. But you at least got to show them some different looks. <laughs> at least at least kind of discourage them a little bit. Because to me, KD didn't really have it going. 
um what's what's uh bill bill seems like he never has it going and it was certain plays where it was just like what like you you can't let Grayson Allen like Grayson Allen out here dunking on motherfuckers like what you what's happening here you know what I'm saying Nurkic looked like Nurkic's been trash all season and Nurkic had like a, a solid game I think they lost I think they didn't they didn't seem like they uh stepped on the floor ready to play and at this point you got so much data on Devin Booker like you know the backstory and it's like at this point, if you're gonna, you know, kind of just not at least match the intensity on offense, because to me the game was lost offensively. There was several times where I saw like, because the Pelicans they only played really bad defense on Booker on a few instances, like Toledo's point where they lost them a couple of times. Like this motherfucker got 50 points, you leaving him wide open. He should never be wide open. Like, you know, it, it was just, a, you know, some something got lost in translation from the coaching staff to the uh, to the guys where it was just like, what, what's happening here? And um, but offensively, there were several instances. And again, you don't win to lose this game because of Larry Nance at all. But it's like, why are Larry Nance and Booker on the same? Why is Larry Nance and Zion on the same side? Like, why is at one point there was a lineup of Larry Nance, Zion and Dyson? out there and like this was on the floor and it's the second night in a row you've done this and i'm like it ain't worked the other night why are you doing it now but the only if you want to take something positive away from this game i would say it was more competitive than the last time we played them the last <laughs> time we played them we never had a chance with this game you felt like they they're one of the worst fourth quarter teams they're worse than the pelicans in the fourth quarter like in the nba so when it was about seven, like a seven point game, to me it was a toss up. Like this would go either way. But like, eh, you're getting there, you know, <laughs> getting there. Raw. So uh Lito, Lito and Chaz both both mentioned um, and I think some things that burn the Pelicans early in the game, maybe you know, attention to detail, um, overplaying assignments, maybe, maybe not communicating. Um how much how much of what you saw tonight was just simply was about personnel differences and the Pelicans just not having maybe um, the right the right talent to deal with a team like Phoenix? If if many do in the league, how much did you see that the Pelicans could have done that they didn't whether that they weren't able to take advantage of or whether just just a, just a bad matchup for New Orleans? <clears throat> yeah, I kind of I think I lean toward uh, Chaz on that one in the sense of. I mean, between I know you're saying Beal didn't have a, that that good of a game, but like between Beal and Booker, they had 65 on 35 shots. You lost, like you lost right there. Sign, seal, deliver. Um, I, I don't think there was a, a lot. Well, I, I don't like saying that because I, I do think offensively we got bogged down for for a stretch, um, and and it, the, the adjustments defensively happened too late. So I, I don't want to say there's nothing you could have done because I don't think that's necessarily true. Um, but that game was lost early, and yeah, they got it. To, they got it to seven in the fourth quarter. That game was over. It, it was over. I don't. I don't think uh, Phoenix ever really felt like that game was in doubt. I don't think they got nervous in the fourth quarter. Um, <clears throat> you know, we did our you know our usual uh, fourth quarter get out rebounded by you know nine, ten, bunch of second chance points, kind of put the game away. So, ah, eh, I, I, it, it wasn't a real strong showing um, on either side of the ball for me. Uh, let's, let's talk a little bit of Zion, man. Uh, Zion, Zion ended the game with 30, but you know, it seemed like, um, it took him a little, it took him a little while to kind of, to kind of process and adjust. Um, and, and this isn't out of the ordinary, you know, he, he, he's had some slow starts throughout, throughout the, you know, throughout the season, throughout his career, kind of seeing how defenses are playing them and then adjusting. And, um, you know, he he ended up with thirty points that I thought it was a, was a quiet thirty, but never really felt like he was able to really be dominant. Uh, there was a lot on the broadcast. Shout out to shout out to Antonio Daniels um, and Joe Myers who talked about um, the coverages that he's seeing now were going to be what he's going to be seeing in April and May if this team is uh, in a first round series and beyond. That's not going anywhere, no matter who's on the floor. Ross, I'm gonna I'm gonna kick the kick the ball back to you here. 
what are you what are you seeing from Zion and how he's attacking these these walls? Because they're not necessarily consistent. They're not like Giannis. They're 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 a little different. And what teams are daring from him? And do you think currently with where his skill set is right now, what do you think he can do to kind of overcome these challenges? Because as as has been said and we talked about in the chat, they're not going anywhere. Yeah, it's it's there's only so much he can do. Um, individually i think that the 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 staff or the roster or whoever the hell you want to say um has to do a better job of putting him in lineups that are that are going to be easier um or at least are going to assist in 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 helping get better looks right like i wish i could pull the picture up that i sent from from the third quarter where you know he's got the ball on the left wing we've got larry nance in the left corner um Eubanks kind of splitting the difference there, you know, not respecting that pass into the corner to Larry, clogging up any kind of drive to the left, you know, any kind of left-handed drive, which is obviously where Zion wants to go. Um, and then, you know, you got Dyson, I think, or Najee or whoever it was in the opposite corner. So Beal's kind of just standing on the block. There's there's just a lot of defenders in the way. Um, mm-hmm. And so in those situations, like, we're going to have to do a better job of not just standing still. I say we, the Pelicans are going to have to do a better job of not just standing still saying like, okay, cool. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm technically, you know, outside of the paint, but that doesn't mean you can just stand still, right? Like these are six foot nine, six ten, Kevin Durant, six eleven, right? Nurkic is seven foot. Like <clears throat> even if you're technically spacing the floor in the sense that you're outside of the three point line, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're spacing anything at all. Because on the possession that that I'm that I'm referring to, we had I think at the time all five players outside of the outside of the, the three you know outside of the arc, and the floor was congested as shit because of where yeah. they were. And so it's not just about you know and I know the question was about Zion right, but in those situations it, it's we're going to have to still be more creative about about like how we space the floor and who's in in what spot because this is what Zion's going to see. It's going to be difficult. Like teams are not just going to give him a free run at any peer, any defender, like even the elite defenders in the NBA, no one is giving him just a free run at that defender's right shoulder anymore. It's just not going to happen, especially the good teams. As you get farther and farther into the season, he gets these really good teams and into a, you know, a playoff or a play in or wherever the hell we're going to be. Um, it, it's just going to get more difficult. I, I think he's doing a decent job. Look, he got to the line, whatever, 13, 14 times a night. He's gotten better at knocking down those shots. That's great. Um, but I think when Zion's at his best – here, thanks for pulling that up. I think when Zion's at his best is when he's really facilitate, like it, oh when his, his drives open things up for everyone else. So this is kind of what I was referring to, Chris. Like all five guys are outside of the paint. There ain't shit you can do here. There's 14 seconds on the shot clock here. No one has moved. No one's cutting. No one's running the baseline. Like – Ross, can yeah, I? Can yeah, I, no, I'm done. Go ahead. Just, can, can we pull that graphic back up? What? what? Go my ahead. God. Go ahead. My Go God. Ahead. My God. Yo. Yo. Th- this if something like this should get you terminated, brother. <laughs> brother. Brother. Shout out to Najee Marshall. If I'm an opposing coach, opposing team's coach, I'm living with Najee Marshall in the corner, in the right corner, right there. Brother. 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 What the fuck is this lineup? You got Larry Nance, Trey, and Dyson. This is this is a one shooter lineup. One shooter lineup. What the fuck is this? What and you mind you, you're trailing. <laughs> you're trailing. You need as much offensive firepower as possible. And I'm looking close. I don't see KD out there. I see I see Booker. I see Eric Gordon. I see Bip. Man, what is this? What is this? Th- th- this is insane. This is fucking insane. This is insane. This is insane. And Larry on the same left corner is Zion again. <laughs> what is he doing? The the irony is that I, th- I think I think that possession actually ends up with a, a a basket somehow or another where I think Trey drove and missed a shot mm-hmm. and Najee. I think whatever it ends up in a basket. And the even funnier part is that group. I think cut into the lead a little bit by getting three or four stops on the other end. And so mm-hmm. it, it's this damn, if you do damn, if you don't situation, right. Um, of, of, you know, you couldn't get any stops early on. And th- this is where I'm a little, 
I don't want to say sensitive to, to the like the issue at hand, you couldn't get any stops in the first half. Like you gave up mm-hmm. 70 points or whatever. So you put in a lineup like that thinking like maybe we'll get some more stops. And there was a point there in the third quarter where they did get some stops and we got out mm-hmm. in transition and they actually got some buckets. So it's like the problem is, is once you're down 20, like it's too little too late. So I don't know. Lito, um, what are your thoughts about about what Zion is going to have to face upcoming? Maybe how he did or didn't adjust to the coverages that he was looking at and some of the personnel, the looks that Phoenix threw out there, and the you know the <laughs> this. <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, it's a lot. Zion has to overcome. He's got to overcome Willie, and he's got to <laughs> overcome the other team. Um. Zion should have and will need to be uh, more aggressive going forward. Um, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a push back on Russ's point a little bit. This this is how teams are going to guard you when you only shoot five feet in front of the room. Like, you, you got you to gotta figure that shit out. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't go – three and a half quarters of just being like, oh, this is fine. This is fine. Yo, you're getting killed. Bro, you got to make your impact on the game. And then you had two rebounds. Nah. Nah, you got to figure that shit out. This why you get max money. But I do I do agree, agree with, with Ross to this point. Lineups can help. Not that lineup. That can't help anything. But lineups, lineups can help. It just depends on who's on the floor with them. Listen, the for, the first quarter for I don't know how many possessions I, I can't remember, but Brad Bill was guarding Zion. Brad Bill was on Zion, and Zion made no attempt, no attempt to score on him. There, there was there was no he every time he got the ball he got in the paint he was looking to pass. Dog, Brad Bill is on you, and 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 to that point and to this point I agree with Chaz. They have too many players to guard. You're not going to out defense them. But if you get him in foul trouble, right, then they got to start making decisions, right? Like, you putting Watanabe in the game, okay, put ball, ball on him. Mm. Put, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's how you win the game. He got to up his intensity and, and his aggression. And if he got to take more, than, this is why I, agree, I disagree with Ross. I think he's got to take more than 20 shots. I, I respect the passing and I, and I respect all of that. But if the motherfucker on the floor with Larry Nance, Dyson Daniels, Najee, like, fuck the assists because they not respecting that anyway. Go get the points. Go get the fouls. Yeah. I, I And you know what, Lito? I keep – I think I, I was starting to think a little bit about Zion and just wonder if he was just too limited where, where his game is right now and his tendencies to beat these kind of coverages as a scorer night to night. But you said something that that I, that I do think is interesting is that well you know he is he is who he is right and when we're talking about finishing well specifically in the half court and trying to beat these coverages however um, I do think that him and the staff have to work together uh, with or without Brandon Ingram who I do want to talk about in a little bit um, because if you're if you're Zion yeah you can make the right basketball play. And try to get your teammates going early on in the game, but they need you to score as well. They need you to be aggressive early as well, even if that means you pick up an offensive foul, even if that means that um, you know you end up on the ground, even if that means if you have to navigate through, through through muddy waters to end up scoring. And it looked like you know he was a little bit too passive in a game like this, to where you look at that guy like Devin Booker who was just. On go mode, you need you needed Zion aggressive and attacking, even in against ugly coverages, um, and trying to find ways. And it, I I don't remember exactly when I saw it to where he had maybe two to three straight possessions where you know he's trying floaters, he's trying different runners, he's trying different things to attack the uh, what the Suns were throwing at him. But at that point, they were already down 10, 15, 20 points. Zion has to find a way. He's going to have to find a way in these high intensity games to impact the game early as a scorer, um, and it's going to be you know I'm, I'll be curious to see how that how that you know translates. It, it can't be just simply dumping the ball off to Jonas consistently, or um, like that can't be it. Even if he finishes that first half, I mean, with that first quarter with five assists, 
Does it matter? <laughs> Devin Booker got 25, you know, or 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 KD goes off of 15. That's going to be a you know a important next step for uh I think for Zion as he continues to see these looks. Hey, um, hey, before you move on, before you move on, I just just I just have to say this respectfully. That's on him. You could have been working yeah. on your game this entire time for these last yeah. five years. You could have added something to it. I understand the injuries. This is on you. Figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, look, this is the this is the grave you build, man. If you don't if you know, you don't you don't want to take certain 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 jump shots. That's not in your game. It's not in your bag. You're not a perimeter style player and you're not six foot ten. I mean, hey, you you know, you're going to have to figure it out. And this is what, and this is how teams are going to continue to guard. So we'll see what adjustments that that he makes that he makes. I mean, because I this isn't the first time he's seen this, seen these looks and had to deal with them. We'll see how he, how he adjusts. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about the schedule now, because as, as we mentioned earlier in the um in the show, Chaz, the, the Suns are now a game, um, or is it, it might be a game and a half now, a game and a half out of the sixth seed away from the Pelicans, and now they own a tiebreaker no matter, even if the if the Pelicans win Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, what I want to know, and I'm going to pull up, I'm going to pull up the schedule here. I got to get this comment off for it to be, for, for it to be seen, but. It's, it's um, one game, Chris, by the way. It's one. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. It's, it's the Lakers game. So, Chaz, I'm going to start with you. The games the Pelicans have left, mm-hmm. how many of them do you think they have to win to secure a sixth or fifth seed and not be in the play-in um, the rest of the way? You say I think they, they have to win? How many How many do you think they have to win? Uh, I think they got to win four. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Because the Suns got a hell of a schedule. I think the Pelicans got to win four. And I, I see... I see maybe one like surefire gimme game on here, and that's kind of like the issue. What's that? What's that surefire game to you? I'll say the Blazers. Okay. Okay. Um, Ross, Lito, wh- what about you? I, <clears throat> I think they got to win like five or six um, because of who they play. Yeah. Like the two teams right behind you in the standings, you just lost a whole game to the Suns tonight. I mean, this Sunday you could lose another whole game to the Suns. Like so, so just against you. And I agree, the, Sun, the Suns have kind of a murderer's row. I think they've got a home and home with the T Wolves and the Clippers, maybe. Um, yeah. And then the other games are us, the Kings, and, and, the, and the Cavs. So like they've got a tough schedule too. But the problem, the problem we all have is that like. Whoever wins these games, so it's it's the Suns and Kings games that are huge because the Kings don't have that tough of a schedule and they're only a game back too, I think, or maybe a game and a half. They so, missing a couple guys though, so I think they, their schedule probably got a little tougher just because of okay. and Herder being out. But still, but yeah. yeah, no, no, I'm with you. So in either case, I, I think you gotta you gotta win five or else you you know you're letting a team go five and three and, and jump you in the standings there, and that's not that's not really what you want to do. So um, it's five for me. Lito, what, um, how many games do you think the Pelicans have to win, and where do you think the wins are? Five. I agree, Ross. Five. You look. You got to beat the Suns. You 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 got mm. you got to you got to beat them. Like you, Ross. I know, but you you got to beat them. If we talking about <laughs> you talking about getting jumped in the standings, <laughs> right? Like you you, you got to do it. You you got to fucking figure it out. Like you are. You are, um, as people love to tell me, you are a top ten offensive and defensive team in the NBA. This is this is what they love to tell me. You you gotta be that. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't just be that on paper. Be be that for real. What do the wins come from? Now that's the that's the thing. Cause like, as much as I want to say, Orlando, I, <laughs> like, I I don't know the last time we won versus Orlando. Like, this is just. Being for real, it's gotta be. Yeah, it's uh, been a while. <laughs> yeah. It's been a long time, dog. Preseason, probably. Yeah, probably. <laughs> we won that game. I don't, I know I don't think we won that game. I don't think we won that game. You might, you might be right. Yeah, I might be right. Oh shit. Um, I would, I would say the Spurs. Um, 
Spurs, Suns, Blazers, Kings, Warriors. You think we win that? You in all honesty, no, 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 no. Like no the I don't. I'm saying that's the one. You, no, no, no. I'm saying you gotta win it. I don't think I don't necessarily know if they can win it, but I'm saying these are to me those are the games you have to win. All right, y'all, look, if y'all in the comments right now, man, please, please smash that like button, man. You know, it makes Justin happy. It supports the channel. If you're new to the channel, makes Justin also, happy. yeah, <laughs> if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe, man. Leave comments, man. Pull up to the live shows. Pull up to the pull up to the record to the recordings as well. Support the support the entire group, man. A lot of a lot of fire content dropping daily on this network here. We're going to hear from DraftKings and then we're going to talk a little bit of B.I. The thrill and excitement of March Mania is here, and DraftKings Sportsbook, one of America's top-rated sportsbook apps, is giving new customers a shot to turn 5 bucks into $150 instantly in bonus bets with any college basketball bet. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code BOOT. New customers can bet 5 bucks to get $150 instantly in bonus bets, only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code BOOT. The crown? Is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and y four six seven three six nine. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and over, age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash promos for eligibility and deposit of restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. Hey, hey, sorry, that was a message from DraftKings. What up, bro? Before you, uh, before you move on to to the BI question, I just wanna, I wanna say this. Like, I, I, I get what everybody was saying about you know the Suns and, and the variety of scores that they do have, but the problem is every time you play Devin Booker, he give you fifty. So, at what point do you go into the game thinking? Yo, I understand who's on that team, but Brad Bill looked like he lost a step. KD don't even like, you know what I'm saying? KD scores as the game comes to him. He does he's not out there like hunting shots like that. Like Brad Bill, I mean, uh Booker comes in here to kill. So like if they score 50 on you last time, how you ain't you ain't take that personally last time? Like you still like we go going to with the same game plan, the same mind frame as last time? That's all I have. I, I, I thought her, and I know that I know all fifty of those weren't like weren't her related. I, I thought her had a pretty bad game overall. Um, I'm, I've been disappointed lately with uh, it just it's the rebounding stuff for me. Like, and granted, they didn't miss a lot of shots in the first half, but like, I mean, I think you got to go back like two or three months to, to see the last time Herb had more than you know five or six rebounds in a game. Um, it, you know, for all the special things he does defensively, it, it's just an area that that, I, that we've been talking about since the beginning of the season. That if I think for this team to like, you know, could we keep talking about none of these centers work, man? Like at some point, this team's gonna have to in this year is gonna have to lean in and just say, screw it, we're gonna live and die by some some small lineup, whatever it is. And like Herb is one of those players that's gonna have to rebound the basketball. Um, that's a, sort of an aside. I thought he had a bad game tonight. Either way, hey y'all, y'all that's in the chat, that if y'all watch the press conference, is this is this are these facts? Did he did he actually call the team soft or 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 is this cap? I need y'all to confirm. Like so somebody find the actual quote and put it in the comments for us. Um, before I get to bi, uh, Ross, what do you think? I mean, you mentioned the center position, and there is no fix. And we talked about Larry Nance, and we talked about Jonas, and, I, and and tonight tonight was was the first matchup in a few games to where I was like, get Jonas the fuck off the floor. Um, uh, I I did not like the game that Jonas that Jonas played. Um, I didn't think he was physical offensively. I didn't think he. I I, I thought he was slow footed. I thought he was late defensively. I thought he gave up too many rebounds. Uh, uh to Nurkic, he had a couple really good contests. Uh, couldn't couldn't hit couldn't make anything in the perimeter. I, I did not like um, Jonas's game tonight. I will say, but I mean, with that being what it is, Chaz, for the rest of this season, what, what this roster is, and I want your thoughts as well, well, Lito and Ross, is Zion at the five the the answer just by default now? Like, is that going to be are those lineups just what the Pelicans Pelicans are going to be forced to have to live with? Um, when we're talking about balance and you know playing a style that they want to play, but still being productive slash dynamic. 
No, nah, I don't think. I think the sample size is too small. It's like, you know, it's it's kind of it's easier tonight against a, a bad fourth quarter team who probably playing like prevent defense at this point. You know, it worked. I've seen it work in spurts, but it's like it's always like, see, we moved on to the five and we got back into the game, but you still lost. You always lose. <laughs> like so, it was like I I don't really know. I think it's situational, right? Um. I don't think Zion at the five help you against OKC. You know what I'm saying? I don't think Zion at the five helps you because the thing, the thing I really, I really don't want to get lost by the fan base, especially or the viewers is like, this isn't like something that happened because, you know, it happened down the stretch and, you know, it's a tough time in the season and the defense has kind of shifted a bit. It's like, yo, you struggle to be good teams all season when you haven't had a rest or health advantage and that's really the issue like again um you go back to that orlando game before brother bi go down you're down like 20 points like you go back to the last sun's game when bi played you was down like 20 points <laughs> book i had 52 you go back to the last cleveland game when cleveland was healthy but missing mobley you lost by like 20 some points like this t- you go back to the previous Boston game. Boston walked you down at the end of the game. You were totally healthy. They walked you down and stumped you out. This team just struggles to beat good teams because, I, for one, I think it's mainly personnel. And for two, you're at a major coaching disadvantage most nights. Like, And even for us, the personnel, like Dyson, I thought Dyson had a really solid game. There was one play to me similar to a Larry Nance play the last game, though. Zion's on the right, like in the right post. He kicks out to Dyson. Bill runs to contest Dyson. Dyson does shoot the three. He drives, does like a dish off to uh, Zion in the dunking spot. Zion scores. It worked out, but Dyson has to shoot that three. And if he's not going to shoot the three, why is Dyson on the same side as Zion? A total non-threat from beyond the arc is on the same side. Like, this is something, this is not our first time asking these questions. This is just something that we've struggled with all season long. I think some of it's personnel, but I think a a large, large portion of it is just um, mismanagement from the coaching staff, personally. I I, I go back to that. I don't know whether it's Zion at the five or whoever. Um, It's more of, like, whoever's playing the five right now, it's not working. (laughs) <laughs> like what we're doing is not working by 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 strategy or by like results. It just mm-hmm. isn't. Then like that's that's whatever. We're at where we're at in the season. Like the, the the roster isn't changing. I guess I keep going to this thing of like we get out rebounded, it seems like almost every game anyway. And that was my whole reason early when we used to have these conversations, like before the all-star break, well, why don't we see more of these, you know, like Trey at the five or Brandon at the five or Zion at the five. I'm like, man, these lineups are just going to get like, they're just going to get mauled on the, well, we get mauled on the glass anyway. Anyway. Yeah. And so at this point, I'm, I'm at a point where like, we, we go through this thing of, of how do you make teams adjust to you instead of always being on the back foot of what are they going to do? What can we, and, no one is adjusting to Larry Nance at the five. No one is making an adjustment to the way we use Jonas at the five. Nobody, not a single team in the NBA is doing that. So what do we have in the arsenal? Like what can we do that might make a team adjust to what, like to us in some way. And I just don't see anything. I don't, I haven't seen us do anything where I'm like, Phew, they better call a timeout and make a change or, this game is going to get away from somebody. We just don't do that. We're sticking with this this very regimented same thing that just doesn't feel like it's working. And also, can I add one more point? It's like, oh, it's again, with the Pelicans, it's like even Ross, he made a point to mention Herb, and I, I agree. And I, and I think we spoke about it a couple shows ago. It's like, if I'm a team, I'm not worried about Herb beating me from down off. You're going to have to do it. You're just going to have to do it. And you see that against good teams. Like tonight, the, the Phoenix Suns shot 20 more threes, 20 more threes than the Pelicans. That's, that's fucking ridiculous. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's fucking ridiculous. And it's like when, when you face tough teams who know how to, like, rattle this roster, 
they just regress back to the norm. Like we've seen it happen a, like a lot, you know, and I think, I think really, I think it's tough. No, I'm going to give the team a little bit of, you know, love though. I thought they played with some pride down the stretch, but again, I don't know how much of that is uh, the Suns kind of just running out of gas and being that, um, you know, bad fourth quarter team they are and how much of that's the Pelicans like, Oh, we kind of figured something out a little bit, but it's like, eh, (laughs) <laughs> and like I again I, I see this too much against good teams and um uh, or at least solid teams. Fuck, we've even seen it against bad teams. So the Pelicans just, you know, they're an enigma, truthfully. And, and I, I know you had that comment pulled up for me a second ago. Like, first off, yeah. we're, we're not one of the best rebounding, rebounding teams. Team. We're like we're a middle of the road-ish rebounding team, somewhere in the nine, ten range. Um Maybe a half, maybe a half rebound a game away from being in the middle of the pack. Like, like we're a run of the mill, middle of the pack rebounding team, and 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 that's fine. Even if even if you want to say, hey, we're eighth, that that's great. Um, but we're not. That's just looking at that's like go look at what what happened. Watch a game in the fourth quarter and tell me if we're a good rebounding team. Let's let's do <laughs> that. Let's do let's do that. Because I don't care about some of these other sort of ancillary things. Like I watch us get the shit out rebounded every fourth quarter second chance after second chance after second chance and it and it's why we don't ever make a comeback in the fourth quarter what are we in the in fourth quarters where we're losing going into it oh, oh in 19 or whatever it is now. well no yeah, yeah on 20 now yeah whatever shit. Right. like that's God why damn, we're on 20. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> why that's why um Lito, any any closing thoughts about zion at the five and and what is left of the pelican center position um in uh in in minute increments yes like just to put him in the fight like no it's not gonna work the same way you're not just gonna put him as the point guard and and it's 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 just not gonna work uh i don't know what the answer is at the five the answer to the question that who who's the five is just not on this team um that 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 that's the the basic answer to it, I, I watched. I watched the team tonight, just totally ignore Larry Nance. I watched the team tonight when when a when a pick was set and and, and Larry rolled. They didn't even fucking roll. <laughs> it was just like, all right, go go ahead, let, let him have the layup. If he if he if he picked and popped, oh, he's gonna shoot the corner. C- cool, like no problem. Like if that's if that's what y'all want to do, we fine with that. And and then on the other side of it, like. Jonas, bro, Jonas is posting up at the elbow, like disturbed my spirit. I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't, I can't put it in the words. The amount of aggravation that Jonas has to take seven dribbles to get into post up, up hit the the spot that he wants to get to on the floor. We're like, in reality, it should be. Post seal bounce pass from the guard. That's the possession. That's it. But I don't. I don't know. Like there, there, there's not a, there's not an easy answer to the center position. Like me personally, I always want Jonas to play. But yeah, it's it's like bro, Yerk, no, Yerkich had nineteen rebounds, and and I'm just sitting there, just looking at the game, like bro. I, so listen, I understand Larry. Larry's undersized in the position that he's playing, but I think that's where you have to use your IQ. I, I see teams box us out tonight. There's no you literally just just space yourself between the rim and the guy you're guarding, bro. All you got to do is just turn around, like that's it, right? And and we don't even do that. Like it's simple sixth grade basketball, like. Little things that that don't get done, though. It was one possession tonight. I swear they got eight rebounds. I swear to God, they got eight rebounds on one possession. <laughs> they were at least four. Bro, I, I don't. I don't know what the answer. I don't. I don't know what the answer is. Like at this point, mm-hmm. at this point, man, I I think you you got to figure it out though, because it ain't looking good. So where you going? Willie Green's uh full full quote here. We got it. We got it pulled up here. Um, 
We have to do better. There is no excuse to put 50, to get 50 put on us twice. We were soft guarding them. We had a soft mentality. We had a soft mentality when it came to being physical on him. Um, it was great time. On. Really? Yeah. <laughs> what are you know, talking about? <laughs> yeah. So moving on. <laughs> Moving on here, man. Let's talk. Let's talk a little. A little bi, man. Um, I mean, look, we've all we've all talked. I mean, we had a members only show where we talked about bi, and we all have thoughts about about his future and contract obligations and so on and so forth. Um, I, I I've been feeling specifically in the past the the past couple games where it's been it's been glaring. Um, and I don't think it necessarily necessarily has to be just just these games. That, you know. Period, but I I think that they're missing the option and the threat of Brandon Ingram. I don't think it fixes it doesn't fix this game, as you mentioned. I mean, when Bi and Zion were on the floor together, along with CJ and Trey, the last time the Phoenix was in New Orleans, it was a blowout. <laughs> Booker also dropped also dropped fifty. We've seen and we've seen other other performances with those two being being on the floor and having you know not. You know, getting getting blown out in New Orleans Clippers game, for example, as well um, that they lost. But I do think that um, it is it is interesting to consider from what we've seen in this stretch without without Brandon and welcoming him back, whether it's next week, week after that, whatever the case may be. Um, what do you guys what do you guys think that he's going to bring back to what we're watching? Is there anything that you see that's missed that he can provide? Um, and if you were him, how would you be looking to, um, produce with what you've seen from this team in your absence, whoever wants to start? The, I would say the easiest way, the easiest way for a player to, uh, integrate himself back into the game is to sit and watch because, because you get the advantage of being on the sideline with the coaches when all the action is happening. You see the little mistakes guys made, like you you see, you can find out like, or you can figure out when it's time for you to play again, what was done or what wasn't done. Um, in a game like this, man. No, 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 not this game. Not this oh, game. not this I'm game. I'm talking about okay. in totality, in totality. Not the game. I'm just saying in totality going forward for what this team is trying to, is trying to accomplish. And for a team that still has aspirations of, winning a playoff series or not or not being in a play in even if we're just talking about the playoffs from from the time that he's been out and what he's been able to see like if you were him or or, or if you could if you could holler at him like what do you think his approach should be coming back from what he's watching right now i hope that he i hope that for real, i hope he understands he has to shoot the three like it's, it's not an option you made 11 threes tonight you know what I'm saying? Like you, you, you have to be a cat. As much as we want Zion, it was a, there was a, because I wanna, I wanna address this too while we, while we talking. There, there was a, there was a um comment that said this right, and and I've seen Bi struggle with this also. So I, I'm not, I'm not believing, I'm not believing that you, you not nah, because because everything. Sometimes it feels like everything has to be perfect for Bi to figure. Like he had the same players on the floor with him that Zion has had. We've seen both of them struggle in in certain situations. Like I seen Devin Booker score seventy one with Josh Okogi. I, I, I'm just saying, like I I ain't, I ain't comparing either of them, but I'm just saying, like this is not necessarily true. Um, but I think Bi's playmaking can make a difference as well. I think him on any side of the floor where Larry Nance is and you put B.I. in, it, it, it's definitely going to make a difference. But B.I. has to understand he has to shoot the three. And B.I. has to play faster. And and if you're if you're going to work out the, the midi, if you're going to work out the elbow, it's just it's one, two dribble pull. It, it cannot be work. It cannot start the, start the possession on a perimeter, work your way into um, mid-range territory. Literally, just start the possession in mid-range territory. Like, start start the possession right there, get to your spot, plant your feet, turn and shoot. Um, that That's how I, I hope he's looking at the game. Rafa Chaz? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I, th- I think, like, where we miss him is exactly where we all thought we would miss him, which is, like, 
depth. E even though I don't think Brandon is like a perfect fit on the roster, he's still a quad like a quality player. Like, is he better than Najee Marshall? Is he better than Dyson Daniels? Is he better than Larry Nance? Like, unquestionably, like, I would much rather have him out there than those guys. Um, you know, this, you know, I think that sometimes things get conflated, whether we're talking about like long term versus this year. Like, of course, we could, like, we'd rather have Braden out there. Um, I don't think we were utilizing him properly either before he, he went down, just to be fair. Like, but I, I think that's where we're missing him the most is like when he's not playing, that means a much worse player is playing, um, <laughs> which, is, like, which is a negative. Um, and so, you know, that I think that's. Sort of a, a silly question, um, uh, not not your fault, but like it, just, people don't think about it like as obvious as it is sometimes. Like, yeah, we'd be better off if a really good player was out there, um, even even with a bad coach and all these other things. So there's that, and then yeah, I think I think Lido kind of answered the second part of that, but it, it's more of the assertiveness. Like there are times where where having a good secondary playmaker like Brandon that either can initiate the offense or in one-on-one -on -one situations can help get a good look. Like that's important. I mean, it makes it a little tougher to guard Zion the way he was guarded in that picture. If, if Brandon Ingram is cutting across the paint. Um, right. So, I mean, there, there's, there's other things we can do. I still think, I still think we, we like grossly underutilize both of those players. And so I don't expect any of that to change um, based off of, you know, set however many, what are we 75 games in? Um, you know, I don't expect anything to change from the way we use those players other than just crossing our fingers and hoping when they go out there, like things work out right. Chaz. I, I kind of agree with Ross, and I think Dallas might have said it also, like if it means less Larry or less – I mean, Dyson just came back, so that's not fair to him. But, I mean, if, you, if it means like uh, less Larry or maybe – yeah, it would just have to be less Larry. I can I can't really think of nobody else in this scenario. It would have to be Larry. Then yeah, like he's he's way better than Larry. <laughs> but I think I think just I just think the evidence show you that like when you play against good teams, he he just won't matter. Like it just he just don't. Not that he does. Not that he doesn't matter. That's that's a bad way to put it. That brand of basketball, three. Three three point attempts on the season at thirty five percent. That's not really like you know. Yeah, his playmaking ability, great, right? Playmaking ability mm -hmm. when he does decide to attack the basket, cool. You know, um, mm -hmm. it's just I don't know. It's just I I kind of witnessed Brandon have a few ruts this season, like including when he actually was injured. So I'm in my mind, like, is he still in the rut at this point? So if he is on the court and he's still in a, in a rut at this point, then what? Like, you know, and I, I just think that starting lineup just been so bad all fucking year. Like, and that, that's the thing. It's like, it's been bad all year. And I, I just, I just don't know. We've seen different iterations of it. <laughs> we've seen, we've seen like just to me and I, I'm going to keep it a dollar with you. I think the only reason these games have been as competitive as they've been, even in the losses, like the loss to OKC, the loss to Phoenix to a lesser extent, the loss to Boston to a lesser extent, because you have a different lineup. I think I think with Brandon in those lineups, I think you lose a lot more convincingly. Like just keeping it keeping it a buck because you gotta have tonight was probably the first game in a while that they shot under 30 threes mm -hmm. you know so like you you have to play ball how everyone else is playing ball like i i just don't i just don't know like is there more space out there with brandon versus more space with um trey i'm i'm gonna probably say there's a little more space with trey just because you have to be held accountable for him um you know hawkins hasn't really provided much off the bench but i i just don't see uh I just I I I, I don't know I I, I I guess you know <laughs> I'll say this, I'll say this I'm before. just like I'm saying if the answer is Larry or Brandon yeah I'm going I'm going with Brandon yeah, we, we want Brandon uh, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if that's the um, question you know yeah the the before tonight 
I agree with you. We had shot a lot more threes. I don't know why they only shot 20. I mean, they, we actually made the threes we shot tonight. Um, so why why that kind of went in the opposite direction, I'm not sure, especially in the game where you were I think losing the guys like early. her didn't really attempt them. Yeah. I think, I think so but before – but the one thing that, that I will say is before Brandon's injury, the, like the the single thing I can point to is that we were starting to play more uh, creative lineups. Right, like we had mm. just saw him at the five against whoever that was, the Hawks, or I don't even remember now who we played. Uh, maybe, Cleveland. Against, uh, yeah, against Jared Allen. It might, yeah, Cleveland. Oh, okay. It was Jared Allen. Like we had started to see more of that, and I think that goes to what I was like talking about in that previous, and you know, in our previous section of like, at least at, at least when you do that stuff, like you make teams kind of start to adjust to you, if it works, and so. I think you're missing th- at least the, that component of like at all times we had a a playmaker out there. Like when Zion's off the cl- floor, sometimes even when he's on the floor, but like when he's off the floor right now, it, it's not it's not real pretty. All right, so look, y'all, we we see all the comments. It's about 250 people in here, man. I don't know how many likes, but y'all typically be on there. Please, man, if y'all are not, please get the likes up. Smash the like button for Justin while he's on vacay. Uh, we're going to get a word here from y'all favorite commercial. And then we're going to get into y'all. We're going to get into y'all questions. Um, and I keep seeing stuff up here, up here about CJ McCullum. We're going to talk about CJ, man. Oh, yeah, we got to talk about uh, CJ. Yeah. One second. Company Burger is the official burger of Propel's Talk and Boot Crew Media. Located at 4600 Ferret Street, Company Burger has been locally owned and operated for 11 years. Grind the meat, bake the buns, make the mayo, get the homemade tots. Company Burger uses Creekstone Farms prime beef to create the best burger in the city with milkshakes to go and a full bar. Company Burger is open every day besides Tuesday from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Can't make it out? No worries, we have you covered. You can order online right now at thecompanyburger.com or check them out on the Toast or Uber Eats app. Company Burger, the official burger of Boot Crew Media. 250 here, 80 likes, not good enough. Yeah, man. You know what you know what Justin meant. (laughs) Man said what he that's man said what he said. (laughs) Well, I thank the Lord. Well, I thank Coach Harbaugh. Fucking love you, man. Love the shit out of you, man. This is for you. it how was quick, extra how quick y'all get how quick y'all get that up is it like that that graphic wow. up is so impressive that graphic well oh, thank the you. lord oh I thank coach harbaugh oh, fucking love you man love the shit out of you man this is for you that's a technical file. <laughs> that was damn. <laughs> That's probably the first time I think we ever been able to use that video back to back. <laughs> I feel like if we had uh, the uh, whatever the ESPN show and like you know they like freeze somebody's screen for a while. Oh whatever, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I, had much, I had lots of shows in like twenty years, but when they got the, you know the four four little boxes and like when somebody loses that out, the just, interruption I yeah part of the interruption where they just like freeze yeah. their screen for like five minutes like a, <laughs> i might i might need to go in like a you know five minute penalty you know what make the video so bad though the just the justin thing he it sounds like he's saying it with a smile he like grind the meat <laughs> it's, so <laughs> it's so bad it's so bad man <laughs> <laughs> all right man let's go man Oh, Let's God. talk about CJ, man. I don't, I don't really have much personally to to uh, say about CJ. I told y'all, man. I mean, I like I like the effort that you know that he's giving right now. I just don't think we're looking at the same player that um, you know physically on, on the floor capable of doing some of the the heavy basketball lifting that maybe he was able to do in his Portland days. I mean, even small things now, man. To where like I, I don't know the last time I've seen CJ made back to back runners. You know what I mean? Like, you know, in the lane, it's just that's that ability to take over games or keep you in games or back to back threes the things, you know, the shot making. Um, it, it it's it's something that I just don't know if you can count on him to really do at this point game to game. Maybe every third game, you know, if that you'll get a Miami performance. I don't think he was bad tonight, but. 
you're not seeing the complete performances of where it was a full game from start to finish. You, you've seen, you know, one one good half, one bad half, one bad quarter, and it just, you know, it it just is what it is. But I don't think that, that that's, you know, any, anything other than really he's just not the same guy that he was right now, and the the roster has some flaws. Um, but that's how I view it. Uh, any other thoughts on CJ? Man, Man I, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Oh, no, I was just I'm looking at CJ numbers and I no lie, man. I think I think CJ kind of of course he laid a definite egg against Boston, like started came out the gates hot pause and uh kind of just ran out of gas. But again, I don't want CJ playing 40 fucking minutes, and this is getting ridiculous. CJ logged th- another 39 minutes tonight. This is getting a little ridiculous to me Um, as far as, like, yo, you got to give some other guys some run. Like, CJ should be right at, like, 35 at this stage in his career. But recently I have seen CJ win a couple of games for the Pelicans that um, I think he was a large part of the reason it was in the, at the end of that OKC game. Uh, First half was terrible for him, though, admittedly. Miami, I feel like CJ pretty much won that game single-handedly, did well against Detroit. I just think, again, when you play in these bigger, faster, more physical teams – I think that age starting to show up a little bit toward more toward the second half. I think first quarter CJ, first quarter CJ, a bad motherfucker. Like first <laughs> quarter CJ is a dangerous man. But I think again, it's like you starting to see CJ get to the point where it's like, look, I got a good a good thirty two minutes for you, bro. Like stop. We we need to <laughs> get get. Maybe you should start going to Hawkins a little earlier. Start going to Ryan. What's his name? Matt Ryan a little earlier. Like, I want to thank the Lord. I want to thank Coach Harbaugh. Fucking love you, man. Love the shit out of you, man. This is for you. What is it, 32 minutes? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 32 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 32 I, minutes I, I, and going to Matt Ryan, my, Matt yeah, Ryan a little yeah, earlier. I, Oh yeah, now that one too. Yeah, I apologize. Man. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna work on that. But um, but yeah, um, yeah, probably CJ should be playing on 39 minutes a game though. It got to stop. It got to stop. I didn't even know he played. He played. He played. He played 49. Wait, wait, I'm sorry, 40 minutes. 40. 40. Yeah, I think this is the back the second game in a row. I think. Sheesh. So you know. that's another thing. It was like, oh, what you doing with that? <laughs> like. <laughs> See the, I, I agree with Chaz. I think you know in, in the first quarter his 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 he got fresh legs. Oh, thank you, Dallas. Appreciate you, bro. Dallas, appreciate I'm that. Sorry, Lito. No, you good. Appreciate you, Dallas. Thank you, man. The problem is, bro. Like he he needs somebody to, um, get him some easy looks. Mm. There, there needs to be somebody on the floor to get him some shots where he doesn't have to work as hard as he, bro. He. Not not particularly this game. Nothing stood out to me. But, dog, he was giving Drew Holiday so many moves, so many dribble moves, like, in and behind the backs. Drew wasn't going for none of that shit, bro. CJ was like <laughs> – CJ was tired. You can see he was exhausted. He needs somebody to get him some easy looks. He's lost a step. He's, 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 he's lost a step. I mean, it's just unless you Bron, that just happens to you. Like that, that that just happens. That particular play style that he has, it requires shiftiness and a quick first step, or or mid, you know, average first. He doesn't have that anymore. So now he kind of got to rely on his jump shot. But the problem is, he having trouble creating separation, so he doesn't get clean looks on his jumper. So that's what I agree with PED James, uh, 504 boy. That's hate, and I like that. But but listen, he gotta we gotta find a way to get CJ some easy shots. And I think I think that's what Brandon can, you know, insert himself into the game and play a role. I think I think that's where he probably um can can be better, you know, for everybody. Cause look, at the same time, Zion gotta get easy shots. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like like it, it, yeah. everybody, even Brandon, somebody got to get Brandon an easy. You know what I'm saying? Like he got to get an easy shot. That, that leads to my next question, uh, Ross. Imperial Pad, appreciate you here. Super chat as always. Are Thanks, we man. going to fall into the play? Man, 
Oh, you got to I'm first on this. <laughs> uh, I'm a pet. I'm a like, like, no, I got a, cool. yeah, cool. yeah, we got a few cool. of these, so, so I'm going. It's cool. I'm just, it, this question is, is, is saved for you. We, yeah, we, we can jump into this one. Um, or if we're gonna, yeah, uh, I think we do. I, 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 I fear this team is hitting a little bit of a wall, a late season wall. I, I don't know that they're making like appropriate adjustments against really good teams. Um, and the margins are like razor thin right now. Like you, you got one game. I mean, the Suns are a legitimately good basketball team built for the playoffs. Like, and this is basically the playoffs. Um, yeah, I think we do. Uh, unfortunately, I, I, I'm, I'm, I fear we do. Okay. Um, yes. Let's see here. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Lito. From Thomas, hmm. another Willie Masterclass. <laughs> Not a question, I'll, but a thoughts on the comment. I'll, I don't know if I can. Uh, I don't know if I can necessarily can. give him credit anymore. So, um, <laughs> you know, hey, um, shout out to that boy Jeremy, man. Appreciate you. Uh, you know, it, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna shoot Willie a little bit of a little bit of bell. The whole team was dead. Like there was there was a total lack of energy, IQ. Um, like there was a there was a play tonight where Zion was guarding KD and KD swung the ball to the corner and Zion left KD to go guard Grayson Allen. And I know Grayson is shooting a decent percentage from – he's shooting a very good percentage from three. But it's fucking KD. It's, it's, Kevin, it's Kevin Durant that you just walked away from. And I can't blame Willie Green for that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't, I can't blame him. I could blame him for a lot of things. Go ahead. Well, Lito, no, no, because I, I just want to – like, I guess I want to expand on that thought, right? Because I think we've all said it, it is that we were flat or – not prepared or whatever, like whatever term you want to use for just getting the shit kicked out of you in the first quarter. Like we were that. So that, like, well, why? Right. Like, is that, was, is it like a, I mean, it's a huge game. It's a team that's embarrassed you now a couple times, knocked you out of the playoffs last time you were there. Like there's been a little bit of beef. Like why this game do you know show for? Is this, is this, is it purely a, a, a factor of the schedule? Because we talked about this, we we beat a lot of sort of run of the mill teams when we there was a while there where we had three days off, we were getting a ton of time off, and now we're at that point in the schedule. And if somebody wants to go back 10, 12 days and, and listen to our show at that point, we were saying, like, man, this this next like 10, 12 days is gonna be tough because we basically play every other day for like two straight weeks. Or we just at that point of the two weeks where we've now played like six games in 10 days Bro. or whatever it is. Like, or, like I guess, like, give me, like, let's, let's talk about that. Why Let, we stop early. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you something um, that, that, that I think, or that I thought about at, at certain parts in the game, just watching them play. Um, I don't think that they, that they believe that they can beat Phoenix. And I, I think, and, and, and it's not a, it's not a, we're scared of Phoenix kind of thing. I just think, you just see certain moments on the flow it's just like it's just nothing we can do about this shit and when you have a guy walking give you 50 points three straight times right the 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 second guy in nba history other than wilt fucking chamberlain to do that that's saying something you got willie willie calling you know you know insinuating no saying that you guarded devin booker soft that you weren't physical with them that you didn't you know what i'm saying like i i i think that they it just might be a situation where they look at phoenix and they say it maybe they don't believe that they can beat them and i don't know if, it, if it's many other teams in the league that they really feel that way you know towards but but this is one where it just looks like all right we just maybe we just can't beat these motherfuckers they ain't gonna say it you know what i'm saying and if, and if anyone from the team sees this they're like, i don't know what the fuck you're talking about we blah blah but it's what it's it's one of the thoughts that I had. Like hey, these motherfuckers don't look like they believe that they can that they can win this game. Go go ahead, Lino, and I I'll, I'll I'll speak after you. Go, go ahead. I just feel like like you know, you you make that statement in a post game. Like 
at what point during the game, like when he let okay, let's just say when maybe he made his first six shots. Like <laughs> at what point during the game do you adjust? Like, like, like you 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 just seen Kim Mulkey lose a game for those exact reasons, right? Like, not to say, you know, Caitlin Clark was fucking. I mean, it's it's really it's really nothing you could do with her. But I'm saying at the same time, like, maybe take Haley off of her. Maybe you you try something else. Like, what point do you adjust in the game? Like, don't wait till after the game to call himself. Like, dog, we right here. We got thirty four minutes left in the game. Like, you had a whole halftime. Like, <laughs> yo, let you know. I, I was thinking about this when I saw how you know. I just me just knowing how Devin Booker been getting down recently with this team. <laughs> Like I just felt like yeah, that was kind of that was on the live. That was dangerous. That was dangerous. I I, I could I could have got thrown out. Oh, I thank the Lord. Oh, I thank Coach Harbaugh. Fucking love you, man. Love the shit out of you, man. You know I'm a. You know I I got I got I got this partner right. I, I got I got this partner, and we we've been, we've been we've been dogs for a long time. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm leaving him anonymous. You know he he go out to the dish in the east, right? He's when the dish oh, pop. He goes out. Yeah. And he got a real like his girl, not really like outgoing, but when she drinks, she get a little like out. She little get a little friendly. silent yeah. stuff sometimes. Yeah, yeah, friendly, yeah. friendly. Yeah, so <laughs> he gets into an altercation with the security guard, right? Security guard look like the Rock now, not not ninety seven Rock, but this Rock, <laughs> right? The Rock today. Right, so my partner he like, well, security guard he ain't gonna slap the shit out of my girl or nothing. So I'm I'm gonna step in, I'm gonna defend her, right? And my partner get beat up. All right, that's what happens with the Pelicans. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to I don't want to connect all the dots and say all that, but it's like, look, Devin Booker got he got he got a personal issue with what's going on with the Pelicans, right? And you have somebody attack, look. Not even like you to you to whoop this nigga ass. We whoop to do that. And somebody antagonizing it from the sideline, right? So he like, oh yeah. When I come back to this block, all oh, y'all getting it. All oh, y'all getting sprayed. When y'all come back to this block, all oh, y'all getting sprayed. And you like, well, come back then. And everybody else like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> like we ain't got nothing to prove. We want. So ever since this dude been spinning this block. One dude been hiding, and he been, and the other dude been, and this motherfucker out, like just going crazy. Cause don't re- don't forget, in the first game where he had fifty eight, the Pelicans were up by like twenty points. He single handedly walked the Pelicans Bro, down without Kevin Durant. He did it by himself. Yeah. So. Somebody got to step up to the plate and meet the challenge, or they got to stop getting drunk and cursing out the security. <laughs> it's just one of the Man. two. Man, you know, and it's crazy. Like, I haven't watched enough enough Phoenix games um, this season to 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 comment on on, on Booker night to night. But man, look, I, you know, watching him in transition, watching him on a dribble left or right <laughs> watching him stop watching him um watching step backs and even when he wasn't cooking running even off ball pelicans couldn't get around screens and by that it was too it was too late he was making the right passes he was making shots on the move he was making off balance shots whatever you needed he was whatever a type of shot <laughs> like you know, but but look though I saw it live the last time he was in yeah. New Orleans you know right. what I'm saying? So it just it and, and, and everywhere on the floor, bro, from the left side to the right side to the corner, falling out of bounds. We saw it in the playoffs a couple of years ago. He he fist bumping babies. You know what I'm saying? You know, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, like he um it's crazy that how there's just nothing the Pelicans can do. Dyson Daniels might have might have an answer for a few a few people that are that are more athletically gifted than Devin Booker. Devin Booker taking him off the dribble, doing whatever he wants anytime he sees Dyson on him. Herb, I'm getting you in foul trouble, or I'm just getting a switch 
and I'm gonna get and I'm gonna get the matchup I want. Oh, we oh we got Larry Nance, man. Watch it, Kevin Durant and Devin Booker multiple times just say, "Hey, <laughs> this mine." You know what I'm saying? When they when they got Larry Nance switched on to him, man, it, it's 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 crazy, and, and, it, and it got me thinking. Like, there's nothing they can do. Like, even if Devin Booker just got to have a bad game, because yeah, he made some tough shots, but I mean. It was so many of them that that was wide open just by him being able to create. It was nothing you could do. I, I feel like Larry not the pigeon, bro. You better right. Larry, Larry not the pigeon. I, I feel <laughs> like I feel like look, bro. Honestly, after not nah, man, fuck all that. Some somebody got to come and, and step to, to to Devin Booker at this rate because at almost with the exception of two times last season. With the Zion dunk and then the other shit, with the exception of those two times, every time Devin Booker has played the Pelicans, I don't give a fuck if he had one hamstring in the playoffs. Every time he show up, Candyman is in the building, and every and everybody scared. Everybody like, oh, he can go, he come Devin Man. Booker. And look, the what? the first, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, one of the things, and because that that reminds me, remember when he came back, uh. He came back early in that series in that game six against uh against the Pelicans in New Orleans. He wasn't a hundred percent. He came Was back. Not. Everybody talks about Chris Paul and him having whatever he went eleven for eleven from the field. It, it was mm-hmm. it was an amazing performance. But what people don't talk about is Book had twenty, and there was a period where he was cooking. You know what I'm saying? To where he, out there on one leg, not himself. I think the Pelicans had a lead at some point. Yeah. Look, damn near walked them, walked them down to, to bring the game back close by himself to kind of keep things like it's just it's always something, man. It's it, it it's been that way for a little bit, even before the Zion Duck and the uh the <laughs> and the Instagram. <laughs> hey, look, man, a lot of wars have been started over over the same thing, man. You know, y'all in the chat, y'all look up Helen of Troy, you know. <laughs> And, and Achilles is in the building. Achilles be showing up. He be smacking motherfuckers. He acting a fool. Achilles say, can't be stopped. Say, bro, it's so crazy, Chris. You you said they were dribbling the basketball up, and they saw Larry Nash. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, that's why. That is. That is insane. Dog, listen, I saw Herb Jones do something tonight that I've never seen Herb do, and 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 that's be frustrated, visibly frustrated. Like uh-huh. emotionally ups like the the frustration was on his face. Dog, book uh book started the possession posting Herb up on the elbow. Herb was falling before the ball was even inbounded. <laughs> He was that frustrated, dog. I had never seen that before. Like, he couldn't do anything with Devin Booker. So much so, it was a play where Book was just kind of like chilling on the right side of the other of the wing at one point. And Herb just knocked him down. He just pushed him. He was just like, fuck it. You ain't you're not about to get this. I, I never I, I've never seen anybody cause that kind of frustration that was done. I can't. I can't. I'm struggling to understand exactly what this comment means. Which one? The, the, the one, one on the screen. screen. The bi disrespect from y'all is really a joke. Y'all Who mentioned winning. bi? Y'all were winning. Yeah, y'all were winning when he was playing, and now you're losing, and that's only because he's better than Larry. I, I don't. There, there's. There's like that. It's poor sentence. I think that, it's poor no, sentence no. structure <laughs> just to start. So it's, it's like it's hard to follow exactly what you mean, but. Uh, if, like, yes, part of the reason that, like, we have first off lost to the Celtics, and we lost to the uh, Suns. Well, Suns. OKC and Suns. Like, two teams that I think are better than us. Whether Brandon's on, we could have two two Brandons on the team, and I, I think we'd have lost both those games. Just to, just to be clear, um, but like, yeah, some of the other games we've lost, it is because we're having to play worse players more often. Like, I don't understand. That's a weird comment. It's just an odd comment that I like. I don't. I don't know if I totally follow what he means. Like, yeah, like we lost games because we played. Didn't work. <laughs> we lost player. We lost games because we had to play clearly worse players than Brandon. Like, I, yeah. I don't. 
the, I, the thing I just don't get is like certain like the shit like the stats we're referring to and things like that. These things actually happened. This isn't anyone's idea. There's no like weird way to like really interpret. It's like when the Pelicans are to like think about this chat. Like for some people in the chat, the Suns haven't been healthy all season. The Mavericks haven't been healthy all season. The Kings haven't really been healthy all season. The Lakers, Warriors, all that. And you've been healthy 90% of the season, damn near, for your top two players. And you're a fraction better than some of those teams. Even when, like, if, if all things being equal, if all of those teams were healthy the entire season, the Pelicans would be firmly in the play-in right now. So it's sometimes the other team just better. <laughs> like, fuck, it is It is what it is. You know, sometimes it's just better, you know. And Vogel, I mean, shout out to him, championship winning coach, but he ain't, got, he ain't like no incredible head coach. Willie Green just really bad. Like, you know, and the Pelicans just don't have that, that echelon of superstar just yet who can take them, who can just, I'm going to get 50 in the first fucking half and I'm going to sit the rest of the game if I want to. They don't have that at this point. So <laughs> it just is what it is, man. Well, y'all look, I mean, um, yeah, as yeah, we said, uh, look, the Pelicans still still control their destiny the rest of the way. Um, you know, they they gotta figure it out. Like we've been talking about a good majority of this show. Um, you know, they got the rest of this homestand to, to kind of figure some things out. Um, and look, it's not like Brandon Ingram is, is going to be back next game, a game after that. I don't think you'll see him this week. Um, and that, and that's including the Phoenix Suns game in Phoenix on Sunday. Um, I do want to, I do want to actually, as we close here, somebody we didn't talk about today, um, Trey Murphy. I thought he played well. Trey Murphy, Trey, and that, and that's that's one of the that's one of the weird and odd things about when Brandon does return is that, like, <laughs> how can is Trey able to maintain this kind of consistency and rhythm that we're seeing from him? The efforts of rebound, I thought he did some really good jobs defensively, active in the passing lanes, uh, stripped the stripped the basketball a few times that was almost in transition. He could have went up for that lob that Dyson threw, you know, with two hands maybe, but I yeah. thought it was bad. Personally, yeah. uh, you know, a little bit, but um, you know, he shot the ball pretty, pretty solid today. He got to the rim. Um, I mean, I I think he's playing some of the best basketball of his career. Like if we're talking averaging, about in averaging totality. seventeen and six, like for this month, like that against some really tough competition. That's that's incredible for him. Yeah, and you know what? The good part about this uh period right now, and Ross, I want your thoughts on is that. With Bi being out, it's forcing him. One of one of y'all said this on a previous on a previous show. It's forcing him to have to look to create in ways that he probably wouldn't have to or wouldn't look to if the team was fully healthy. There's periods in the in the you know, shot clock where he like, well, shit, somebody got to shoot this ball, and you're seeing him <laughs> shoot the ball on the run off the dribble. He's not, you know, that's not really his game yet. But you're seeing him, you know, take take attempts, step back threes, and things that aren't. You know, you're not accustomed to him trying on the regular, but it's just because the, the, with the lack of creation the team has, he's, you know, doing it, going right, going left, getting to the rim. You're not seeing him dunk the basketball on folks. You're not seeing him attempt a lot of it right now. It's just, you know, regular fundamental, you know, basketball and him just really trying to find ways to impact the game. And that's just on one side of the floor. I, mean, I, think, I thought he played, I thought he played well tonight. Um, I thought he played well tonight. You've been seeing a lot of, a lot of rebounding, which technically is a defensive stat. So, you know, you've been seeing a lot of rebounding. You've been seeing um, – you've been seeing a lot of shot blocking. You've been seeing some playmaking from him. He's kind of had – you know, with B.I. being out, he's he stepped up. Like, he's he's giving you a, a lot of the game and his repertoire he was able to show you. Um, Chris, I even thought Dyson Daniels played good tonight. You know, look. You know, I was gonna wait for y'all. I was, I was gonna wait for y'all to say. It. You know, you know, <laughs> my dog has some. You know, he has some. He has some moments that you know I would have liked to see him. Um, man, like, bro, like to me, basketball is like life, man. The shit is really all about approach. And to me, I don't care. Um, I don't care if Dyson goes over ten. 
I don't care if he if he airballs every fucking layup that he that he attempts. I don't care. Like it's the fact that like you are one of the only people that specifically off that bench that can impact the game in multiple ways if you at least try to. You know what I'm saying? And I think for him, the attempts were there. Phoenix will and, and Phoenix teams gonna dare you to do it. The team's gonna dare you to do it. So I thought he had a really good game and creating for others. But you know, when he came in the game, they were down 20. I want to see Dyson also do that. I Dyson gotta prove to me he's not a front runner. You know what I mean? The confidence and shit gotta be there when the game is closed. The confidence gotta be there when you know you going against a team like Golden State and Draymond talking shit to you. And you know, people being disrespectful to you and people people challenging you in that way. You know, you go against Pat Bev. Like I I, I want to see him when things get 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 tough and games are close and they're asking him to make a play against against a tough opponent. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um big shots, things like that. Like you get you get drafted where he did at some point you gotta do it as great as he's been uh defensively and, and rebounding and so on and so forth. He, he you know, they need him to be a little bit more than a glue guy some nights. He gotta be able to do it. Yeah, two 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 things. One, go back to the Trey Murphy thing. I totally agree. Yeah, the, the like the biggest change for him is the, is rebounding. Like the fact that he's become a guy that you can count on to get six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Like that that's a huge progression for him that I think is going to make him more playable in a variety of lineups that is going to keep his floor spacing like on the floor. Um, but the, the Dyson and I, I mean, the stats sometimes can be misleading. But like Dyson was the only positive on the floor for the Pelicans and I plus 10 in 25 minutes. Like it's difficult to be plus 10 in 25 minutes and lose by 13. But it showed though. Like, 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 like no, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, that, on the floor like, too. like it's like, it's difficult in a good way. Like uh, kudos to him. That means the minutes he was out there, we were like, we played really, really well. And I we even pointed it out earlier when we were like criticizing the spacing on that, in that picture, the funny part of that is like the next three possessions down the floor, we got steals. I think even one of those was Dyson who comes down and makes a layup, but like that funky lineup actually did what they were supposed to do defensively and got stops and got out in transition. And like, that's where you do miss Dyson. Like anything he can give you offensively is found money at this point. Like, and, and great. If he gets more <laughs> in the if couch, he, if, he, if he gets more confident and like that can become a regular thing, Hey, great. But if he can just get back to being another option defensively over these next two weeks, like that's that's a good thing. I think, um, can I, let me ask y'all a question. Um, you know, so look, <laughs> looking at the final stretch of the schedule, let, let's say with the Pelicans, let's just say the Pelicans are healthy tomorrow. Right. Type is totally mm-hmm. hypothetical. Yeah. Looking at that final stretch of the season with everything we know and we've seen. Would you guys be confident going down the final stretch of that season, like as a totally healthy uh, Pelicans roster? Would you feel like, oh, we could, we got a much better chance now because we're healthy, or would you still look at that like this shit is still like really tough, and I, I don't know how we gonna <laughs> make it out of here? I, I, I mean, I don't know, I don't know about about much better because i still think for the pelicans some of it is is matchup based mm-hmm. I, I i just think there's certain things offensively that no matter who's out there they're just gonna struggle with just certain regular things when it comes to inconsistent pace inconsistent ball movement inconsistent cutting that i don't think is fixed no matter who's out there and that's outside of the flaws at center and some of the other things you would like you would have liked to see them address Mm-hmm. But for me, man, the only thing I can think of that that is way better, Chaz, and I think we talked about it post um, one of the previous shows, is that at least I know when Brandon Ingram walks on the floor, teams are going to care enough to blitz him. Some teams are right. going to care enough to throw a double on him in the post. Some teams are going to care enough to give him some kind of attention and not just wave their arm at him when he's out there on the floor. Mm-hmm. It don't mean that it's going to – you know, we talk in enough about – Zion and, and, and B.I. not being an optimal or, or a, a natural fit. I think we all we all can agree with that, and especially with the way that they use them sometimes um, as well together. But, I mean, watching the way Zion is being guarded, man, and, and um, I'm not sure him being able to have a dominant stretch consistently against good teams 
especially without not being able to shoot the basketball or just get to the free throw line consistently in a game with 20 free throw attempts in a game with 15 or seven. Like he, he can't, he's not going to be able to control the game either. You need somebody else that can, when they walk on the floor, you'll blitz him. Mm-hmm. I know we got, we got all eyes on Zion, which is going to be there regardless, but we can't leave him open. We got to stop him from getting to the spots. Like I think the team desperately, uh, this, this group specifically needs mm-hmm. that. You change certain elements, maybe you might not need it as much, but this group that they have built, I think, needs what Brandon can bring from that perspective. Well, I I meant more so like, I'm like, say he here and say they blitzing him and they, you know, they're giving him the attention that he's got most of the season. It's just like a lot of them teams just seem (laughs) seem like they're just better. (laughs) Like, I don't know, it just like the magic is just. They just like designed like by happenstance, kind of to beat the Pelicans. Like they they shoot yeah. threes, they're real smart. Um, they get to the free throw line. A lot of uh like crazy wingspans, physical team. Then you look at like even the war. Even though we beat the shot the Warriors earlier this season, we look at the Warriors. The Warriors shoot a ton of threes. Most likely they're gonna have like the best player on the floor. Mentally they're really tough. The Lakers, another team that just I don't know what the fuck the Lakers got <laughs> with the Pelicans. This they like they're just designed to beat the Pelicans a lot of the time. Yeah. And um, that's why even I know they Devin Vassell's out, but that's why I didn't even say the Spurs game was like a gimme. Cause I'm like, this fuck man, Spurs serious fucking like them dudes like on any given night, they just be Phoenix. Like, you know, and right. the last yeah. game we had came down to a fucking game winner with them. It's just I just I'm never confident with the Pelicans going into like a game, and that's like the the difficult part. Like I'm never like confident. It's it's crazy. Nah, I I don't think anybody could say that that they're confident or sure. I mean, just just do you think their chances are better? I mean, that's all yeah. I think. Anybody else? <laughs> we don't like shit. <laughs> I don't feel good about it, man. Like I said earlier, I, I mean, they look like they're playing, but. Hmm. Well, so wait. Did who said who who said before that 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 might be a one of those blessing in disguises? Was that if it played out that way that them not them them being in the plan versus um I I, I don't remember. It, it, was, it, I thought like there was someone been, that had an opinion at some point. It it might have been Justin. Um, and I, I think, think he was more. I think he was more referencing that. It, at the time, it looked like that playing situation would have like confirmed that you definitely would avoid Denver. Mm-hmm. Which okay. We were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. which I, and I, so I think his comment was more around like, yeah, if you get in the play in, like we still in theory should like could maybe win the play in situation and like get in the playoffs. Yeah. And I think at the time, Denver was maybe third. And anyway, I don't remember the exact context, but I think it was more around like, how do we just not play Denver in the first round? Um, <laughs> I don't. I mean, yeah. What y'all think about that? I really don't care if it's Denver or anybody else. Like, I, I, I think you know this team. This team got to figure out who they. They got to figure out 100 who they are and who they're not on a national stage. Yeah. And if that means getting getting embarrassed by Denver and swept or whatever it is, and that's what it means. Uh, well, like, yeah. Look, look. That could be that could be what it means, Chris. But like, would you rather that happen in the first round or the second round? And I think that's kind of the the like for me where I'm at is like I. I'm pretty confident I know where this team is. Um, but I would still like to play like the T Wolves in the first round if I could if I could, you know, if I could work yeah. the schedule, if I could work the schedule that way. Um yeah. I don't necessarily want to get punched in my face like in the in the first round. Like it'd be it'd be cool to like compete in a playoff series for once. I think I think you gotta look <laughs> at it and say, like for me, I look at it and say, which team <laughs> could I realistically for Four games. Let's just say four games. Mm-hmm. Have the best second and third best players. Because most nights you're not gonna have like the, the. Let's say Zion versus Ant is a toss up. I give uh, Jokic the edge every time with that. So it's gonna come down to Murray, Michael Porter Jr. You know those guys, Aaron. Uh, you know, catch like that, and I'm just like, damn. I I I don't know, but I know I know in the in the playing, if it's win or go home, I don't trust the, the Pelicans under that kind of pressure. 
I'm, I'm, I'm back. I'm back. I, I, yeah. Look, I, I, I was never like I don't want to play in the play. Um, I, I mean, I think, like I said, ju- I think when Justin, I, th- I think it was Justin said that there was like context around that statement. Mm-hmm. I think the play in's a bad situation for the Pelicans. Like, yeah, you got to You got to throw it all against the wall to stay in the six because I just you find yourself in like a you know a best of two against the Lakers or something like that's Ooh, yeah. you, you, you know I, that's yeah. not we don't want to mess around with a that. lot of your. A lot of your success in this season, I think, is also tied tied into. We talked about fifty wins. We talked about not not making a plan. You, you know, possibly being in a situation to not get either of those after what the season looked like it could be going. You know, it puts you right back in. You know, making making small small steps towards towards getting better, but not you know large enough in a in in a league that can. You know, I mean, look at look at Sacramento. You know, last year was their yeah. year. Every, everyone was healthy. And now this year you get a little bit of that injury regression, maybe a little mm-hmm. bit of talent talent regression. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, now where are they going? Let, let, Who would say the Pelicans won't won't be that same type of story? Let me ask you this too. If, if someone else was the coach, let's say you had – let's say you had a coach. And just think about your favorite coach, right? Let's say it's mm-hmm. Spolstra. If yeah. Spolstra was the coach, you're in this situation, right, and you – you know, it's it's familiar ground, so to speak. But then again, if you look at the past, the teams that were trailing the Pelicans, with the exception of maybe Dallas, and Dallas kind of pulled the plug toward the end of the season, they never were, like, better than the Pelicans. And and that's the difference, where it's like yeah. Dallas is, like, better. And where they're here now, Phoenix is nowhere. better. Like, the Lakers are arguably – better like where their top two players are better like and that's where it's kind of like oh what the fuck but do y'all do y'all think willie green manages to fuck this up or if it fucks up will it be a lot of it be on willie green if if, if it all like just goes to hell Lito, let's let's talk about this without without getting into the actual specifics of the situation we like we we've heard from multiple multiple people that um and I talked to I talked to a to a a guy the other day that mentioned how there are teams even that right now are installing different sets and things to run towards the end of the season towards playoff time to show teams things that they don't they may not have on film just to right. you know like I, Chaz if. This team is in a playoff series. I'm serious. Right. If this team is in a playoff series and they are running the same shit, I'm gonna lose my mind, bro. I'm almost at a at a at a point of I don't believe. I can't believe in my mind that, that a staff or a team can be can be blind enough or um just yeah, I mean, just 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 overall blind enough or stubborn enough to not see the creativity that's missing when this team is healthy or when they aren't. You know, right. and and I'm, and I'm not up here saying that I'm you know that any of us are basketball wizards in regards to like this isn't this isn't a JJ Redick and LeBron James podcast, right? But okay, we've been asking for a single a single pick and roll, so if we ain't got that. We need to demand creativity. I think we, we saw that creativity. I think we saw Zion in motion probably like once, to maybe twice tonight. And I think they scored on both of those. But it's like you should probably see that <laughs> like thirty times, forty times a game. <laughs> what the I fuck mean, are you doing? Yeah, HS, you 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 got you 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 got a guy in Jordan Hawkins that you put who's who is a movement shooter. Right, who you you literally put in the game to park into a spot and don't move, just stay right here. Yeah, like, yeah. go in the corner, bro. No, go, go in the corner opposite of Zion. Go, 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 go on that side, Larry. You get on that side with with Zion, so we can so we can park Nurkish right there. We got him right where we want him, guys. <laughs> this is what Ross. Ross, am I being am I being naive? <laughs> Am I being naive here? Is there is there any thought of you? Is there yeah. is, is there any thought? That, is there any thought that there are that there are certain things that the Pelicans are waiting to to unveil or experiment with that 
that best puts their that puts their players their talents in better positions to be dynamic. Like, do you think that they're waiting for certain periods? Do you think that there's certain that there's certain things? The game April twenty April twenty first. I see what's happening. I see what's happening. I see what's what happening. You, what, what you think, Ross? Are you think? Or you think we get in? We get in uh, uh, a full forty-eight basketball minutes of um, elbow sets, a couple, or maybe you know, maybe a, a, a drag, a drag screen here or there. What you think, dog? You look disgusted. <laughs> That's my answer. He doesn't believe. He doesn't believe they have anything in the in the. In the I workshop. need to answer this question. Like we we. <laughs> I'm not, trying, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not answering this question. Nah, bro, bro, bro. I see, <laughs> they, I see, they, they I see what's happening. So, sometimes you yeah. wish you knew a little less. Sometimes yeah. you go ahead, go ahead, Lito. What? Yeah. No, no, no. I see. I see what's happening. I, I see. I see. When whenever somebody hosts a show, they 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 get extremely optimistic for whatever reason. Like it, it, <laughs> it, 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 it turns into a belief. Like I believe. I, <laughs> You think we got Jermaine 2.0 right at the at playing point guard tonight? I, I'm telling you, I think that's what happens. It's the optimistic nature of being a host. It, it, uh, it, it, yeah. They go run, they they go run elbow in a in a um in a in a postseason series, man. Zion gonna be parked in the corner for real, man. It'll be the first play. I'm kind of serious. That shit hurt bro. my soul, bro. <laughs> that shit hurt my soul. I just don't want to believe it. I don't want to believe it, bro. They're going to be the same. They are going to run the same exact offense that we are watching today or that we are watching when they're healthy. Yeah, Chris, here's, what, here's why I say yes, because we've seen over the last week or two, because it's crazy. Like, we, we, we said this. We were like, it's we know that teams are going to change – their defensive looks against the Pelicans as we get into these later months. Like that for a long time, teams just played Zion straight up. Like, Hey, is what it is. Like we, you know, it's a regular season, this, that, and the other, we've seen a transition about how teams, the way teams have defended us over the last two, three weeks. Like we have watch the games. If you haven't seen it, go watch the damn games again. I haven't seen us do one damn thing different. Not one. Brandon didn't go out and we said, oh, man, let's play faster and spread the floor and run more uh, dribble handoffs. So, like, we, like, we didn't change anything other than the, the the names that are on the starting lineup. That's the only thing that changed. Like, we don't we have not done one thing. And so to think that they're just going to roll out in the like a play in or playoff series with a new offense or, or new like sets that they want to go to re- more regular shit it's absolutely absolutely naive but you know what this is this is part of the process of of uh supporting and putting content um together about this basketball team organization well pelicans are 45 and 30 that's the show man shout out to all of y'all in the comments man that showed up shout out to all the all the super chats for another another live show um justin will not be back wednesday so uh, either myself or someone else will be hosting it will probably be me again unless someone volunteers we see the pelicans again wednesday it could be a I mean, must win depending on how you look at it at home would say chas yeah. i know about his sons yeah 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 so they got they got the magic the magic wednesday and then shit we'll see what happens from there the spurs on friday so for myself for for Lido, for ross for chas Company Burger, as well as DraftKings Sportsbook and Birdsaw Law Firm. We'll holler at y'all next time.